Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I'm here, I have my cup of tea ready. I have my new sweatshirt representing my school today. Today we are talking about chemistry courses and I'm finally, finally making this video and this vlog because I said I was gonna make it months ago. Um, but here we are and I'm finally making it. And I think now is actually a great time because it's August. We're getting ready to head back into school and so I think now is actually a great time to talk about study tips and just things of that nature um, as we hop into classes again in the fall. First off, if you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Kaisha Lawrence and I'm a blogger at stylebykai.com um, where I've been blogging about my college experience but also some lifestyle and some fashion. So if those are all things that you enjoy, definitely check the link out below. Um, but yeah, I am a senior at the University of Maryland. And I'm studying cellular biology and genetics with a French minor on the pre-medical track. Um, and so as I'm going into my senior year, I've taken lots of chemistry courses at this point. And so I thought that was a really great time to kind of talk about chemistry, college chemistry in general, how to study, how to do well, what these classes are like, trying to pump us up because I know that chemistry is one of those topics that it's just so hard like let's not even front like or get into this video without first acknowledging that it is really difficult we're trying to have 4.0 season we are trying to do well and these chemistry courses are not going to stand in our way at all um so without further ado we're going to go ahead and start talking about the video as far as chemistry my relationship with chemistry you could say um i've always really liked chemistry chemistry was actually the course in high school that kind of got me onto the stem track it got me thinking about oh maybe doctor seems like you know something that i could do i actually ended up applying to college all of my colleges as a biochemistry major there was one school that i applied to that didn't have biochemistry and i applied as a straight up chemistry major like that's how much like go chemistry i was um but that being said all of that excitement um was met with a lot of challenges and a lot of anxieties around taking these college chemistry courses because as i got into college i just constantly heard about the challenge i heard about the averages being in the 50s and the 60s and i was like oh so i'm about to fail <laughs> like it was definitely like a lot um and so in this video i want to be like completely real and as as transparent as possible and that's why one of the first things that i said is that yes these classes are hard and just recognizing that things can be hard but that does not mean that they're impossible right so i wanted to break this video up into different parts um and so i'm going to talk about each course on its own for a little bit and then kind of finish up the video talking about some tips in general that kind of applies to all of the courses or overlaps so the first course that we're going to talk about is general chemistry one so general chemistry, or as we like to call it, gen chem, is going to be the first college class that you take. Um, and this class basically covers all the principles of chemistry um, that you're going to learn and then just build off of in all of your other courses. So in general chemistry, you're going to be learning atomic structure, you're going to learn the periodic table and how to read it, trends of the periodic table, learning chemical reactions, how to balance an equation, how things react with each other, acids and bases, which acids and bases will come up literally in every single course, like every single chemistry course. So I think one of the best things about Gen Chem 1 and compared to all the other chemistry courses that I'll talk about is that it really does build off of what you've learned in high school. Um, a lot of it will be some review from high school. And of course that changes depending on what kind of high school you went to, what kind of education they taught of chemistry at that high school. Um, everyone has different baselines of what they learned. Um, but hopefully if you took chemistry in high school, it really does build off of that. The first tip that I wanna share, if there's anyone watching this that's gonna be taking Gen Chem 1, um, is start preparing right now. It's about August now. There's a couple more weeks before school start. I would open up that book and just review some of the things that you've learned. Things like significant figures, Balancing, balancing an equation, some of that math, some of those formulas. I would honestly just look through your chemistry book, re-familiarize yourself with some of those concepts. And also Crash Course is a really great resource. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I would watch Crash Course videos for fun sometimes. I think they're very entertaining. Um, and so if you want to like review a little bit before school starts, but you don't want to start studying because it's still summer, I suggest just watching like some Crash Course videos as well. The reason why this will help you a lot is that not only is it the same material coming back at you, but in college, honestly, they're starting to test you on your understanding of the concepts. 
versus in high school sometimes it was a lot of just like re-putting something out that you learned in class or maybe the problems you went over in class and on your practice worksheet are basically exactly what shows up on the exam and in college classes such as Gen Chem 1 it's not always that way and so I found especially now looking back at some of the exams they really want to test you on their concept they want to test your understanding um, so I want to give some study tips on understanding general chemistry one material so the first tip that I want to talk about is just putting your 110% effort in general chemistry one just because this is your first college chemistry course there's so much unknown there's so much you're adjusting to you're still trying to figure out what study you know skills and tips do you need to succeed and so i would say when i say give 110 percent, i just mean don't study to the level that you felt comfortable with in high school try to study a little bit more than that and um just put in even a little bit more than you think is 100 that's why i say 110 um just because as i'm as i keep saying it really is challenging and i don't want to shy away from how hard these classes can be again that does not mean it's impossible but give yourself the best like chance to do well on that exam by just like throwing everything at the wall and you know don't just rely on okay i've done my notes and i've done like this isn't that you know i'm done or in high school a lot of times when your teacher gave you the exam review it's like oh do the exam review and you're done and like all i'm saying is just try to like do a little bit extra um and really prepare yourself especially for at least that first exam um because again it's your first chemistry course it's going to be the first exam nerves are going to be high and so just prepare as much as possible so going into how to prepare practice is so key for this course and i've seen a lot of times students fall into this trap of passive studying which i talked all about in my video about how to get a 4.0 gpa in college and tips for straight a's in college that was just really general study tips um and just simply like rewriting your notes or even going to lecture um doesn't mean that you're really learning the material also when you go to lecture be sure you're paying attention the notes that you're taking but then when you go over those notes um really try to make sure that you're understanding them and a way that I like to do this is actually by having a whole other set of notes that I take outside of class. And when I do that, I try not to just like rewrite what's been written by the teacher, but I try to make sure that it's making sense to me as I rewrite it. And I start to look up YouTube videos and just circle things or highlight things to bring to office hours, um, things like that. And then tip three is about making sure that you understand the concept. This kind of goes along with practicing, but don't just practice the same you know kind of format of question again and again um for example your teacher might give some examples inside of the lecture but it's likely that they are not going to put that exact same example on the exam and so make sure that you're not just like memorizing oh you have to do this and this molecule with that molecule like no because on the exam you can have a whole other molecule because they're trying to test your understanding of the concept and so what i would do is looking at the textbook for practice problems googling practice problems um office hours is another great way as well because you can ask questions like i like to ask hypotheticals of my professors like oh but what if the pka was a little bit different or like what if you had like a stronger nucleophile um just to kind of get a gauge of like what are the what ifs you know <laughs> what can you put on my exam what should i be looking out for because those are the things they're going to try to do is testing like oh they may not have seen this before but if they actually knew what this meant, then they can get it right. Like that's the kind of questions that your professors are gonna be crafting for you. Um, and so practice, but practice smart. Again, don't just look at the same types of problems, but try to diversify the problems that you're looking at. Uh, so I also talked about this in my other video, but going to discussion is really great for chemistry courses because your TA will prepare some practice for you. Another tip that I have when working on chemistry is that it's very easy to also get like really comfortable with having your notes there. Um, and so just making sure you're giving yourself time where you're putting all of the notes away, no extra help and just like struggling with the problems. And I say struggling because like it is a struggle, especially at first, but the best feeling is when you actually master it in those study sessions. So then you can do that on the exam. You can lose a lot of like silly points on these exams. Um, things like not having the right significant figure, things like having the wrong molecular weight in your equation, like just a lot of like really small stuff that again, the averages end up being so low. Not because like the class only knows 50% of the material, but because there's just so much like nuance when it comes to these chemistry problems and points can be lost so easily. Um, so to give yourself the best benefit when you're practicing, look out for those really small things. And again, it's very easy 
I do this too when I'm studying. I was like, oh, that one was small. Like, you know, when you're grading yourself, you grade yourself easily, right? <laughs> grade yourself like you're your professor and be like, no, this is not okay. Like 0.5 is not the same as 0.7. You were wrong, you were off. Figure out how you got it wrong. Like kind of be a little bit hard on yourself when you're studying just so that you can get as many points as possible on the exam. So for transparency, as far as what getting an A in this class looked like, I'll just put up what my exam scores were over here so you can kind of see what the breakdown was and I included what the average was just to get you a feel of what the average in the class was but the curves kind of change every semester but um this is just how it was for my class and I'll do this for every course that I talk about just for the transparency and showing um that yeah you're getting sometimes 70s on those exams um and still end up with an A um so yeah if you're going into one of these courses again every class is different I'm not saying aim for a 70 I'm not saying aim for a B like aim honestly aim to do your best um but just wanted to show kind of the number breakdown of these courses so after general chemistry one comes everyone's favorite subject organic chemistry I feel like when I say organic chemistry, it has to be like black screen, like ah. There was just so much like negativity around organic chemistry. Like whenever there's like a pre-med joke, like orgo is always the butt of the joke. Like right now on TikTok, it's the like, you can't hurt my feelings um, TikTok. And I've just already seen so many where it was like, you can't hurt my feelings. I took orgo. And I definitely get why. <laughs> I definitely get why. Um, but yeah, in today's video, hopefully the following tips are going to help out. So let's go ahead and talk about organic chemistry. Organic chemistry in the end actually turned out to be one of my favorite courses that I've taken. And I still love organic chemistry to this day. I actually am going to be a tutor in this upcoming fall semester for organic chemistry one and two. And so I'm excited to help other students um, learn this material and do well in this class as well because this was a class that when I tell you guys I was so nervous to take like I really thought I was not able to do well in this course and every time I looked up organic chemistry tips or like just things of that nature I just saw like so much things that were making me feel so nervous and so anxious and feeling like this course was like impossible um and so that's why whenever I talk about organic chemistry um, again, I'm being transparent and real. I'm not saying that it's easy, but I do want to shed some positivity. I do want to shed, um, you know, for anyone else who looks like me, that black girl magic, knowing that I got to aim this course. Um, I want to shed that for positivity, for inspiring others to know that they can also get an A because like I legit thought that getting an A was impossible. And again, just because it's hard does not mean that it's impossible and i'm gonna show you guys how i did that and how i studied so before i go into more detail i already wrote out a whole blog right after i finished taking orgo talking about how i got an a in organic chemistry and it's one of my most popular blogs on my site so definitely i'm gonna link that one below so before we hop in what even is organic chemistry and why does it get all the heat so organic chemistry is basically the study of molecules that have carbon in them so organic molecules that we find in our life and carbon is the molecule that's basically like the unit of life um, and it's really important but what makes organic chemistry so hard is that it's like learning a whole other language that's probably the best um, analogy about organic chemistry that a person can give and there's just so much material that you're learning for the first time again general chemistry was a lot of review from high school you've kind of seen this stuff before you're a little familiar if you have not taken organic chemistry before, you have not taken exam, like you have not seen this stuff before at all. And so it's just a lot of learning. Um, and there's such a learning curve that you're taking throughout the class. And you only have a couple weeks to, you know, learn this stuff, take it in and then take an exam on it. Before we hop into the tips, again, here are the breakdown of my grades. The class average was a 54%. This curved me up to 95% as my final grade and I ended with an A. So one of the biggest tips that I have to give about organic chemistry is constant studying, not cramming, and practice. Um, those are really like the three takeaways. If you're gonna take anything away, just like honestly do this to do well in organic chemistry. Something that I did to help me do this was I actually scheduled in blocks of time that I was gonna be reviewing organic chemistry after my lecture every single day. So when I talk about practice and really putting the work in for organic chemistry, 
this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> so this is my organic chemistry folder um, and my organic chemistry notebook. And I think I had one more notebook that I did practice exams in. This is kind of a look at what my in-class notes look like. And then after class, I would flip over to the back of my notebook. And the back of my notebook, I had my outside of class notes. So these are a little bit neater. Um, I tried to just go over all the material that was talked about in lecture. And while I'm doing these outside notes, I'll watch a YouTube video. I'll like have little um, post-it notes <laughs> where I write down questions to take to office hours. Um, here I have all of the printouts. Um, lots of different printouts of just practice folder is filled with practice so i would have printouts of exam discussion worksheets uh, my professor also did problem sets which is super helpful she just had them uploaded on our elms page and so these are some stuff that is not required it's not graded nothing but it's there to help you and it's there for a reason and so i would always go through the problem sets uh, and try them out on my own and then compare them to the key and then I would also go to office hours and ask about any questions that I had. I usually try to stop in office hours every single week. If there's any type of study groups I would definitely go to them. Um, they can be really really helpful especially to have other people presenting you with problems to go over um, and just people to study with as well. I also super have to suggest for you all to buy this book here. It's Organic Chemistry as a Second Language. There's a first semester one for Orgo 1 and a second semester one for Orgo 2. And this book is absolutely amazing. I actually bought this in the summer because like I said, I was very nervous about taking Orgo. Um, and so I bought this in the summer and I went through the first couple chapters. Um, and I also went ahead and on my blog, I have an Organic Chemistry 1 guide, which um, I kind of handwritten and went over some of the things that you should know before going into orgo and so some of the general chemistry stuff and then introducing you to bond line structure um, and some of those skills that you want to pick up really fast in those first weeks of class um so if you're interested that's on my blog um definitely get this book as well and just like get your feet wet into orgo so for this class as i said do not cram avoid procrastination at all costs there's just way too much for you to try to learn and have to know for that exam for you to think that you can study like the night before the exam. Like just give yourself the best step forward and study this all the time. Um, like I said, I had like blocks chunked out three times a week. And then of course on the weekends I was studying um, and then leading up to an exam, I studied for like 30 to 40 hours. And then while studying, it's just like trying to master those reactions as you learn them. As you learn a new concept, like chair conformers, I was like, all right, we're gonna learn chair conformers like right now. And I would look up some videos um, and just keep practicing them because in the next class, you're learning something else. So I just wanted to share some helpful resources that really helped me out. Leahforsai.com, Google it, bookmark it. This site is super amazing. Like she has these organic chemistry cheat sheets that really followed what I was learning in Orgo, like to a T. And her videos just made so much sense. She went over things so slowly and so clearly and they just helped so much. Um, I watched probably like all of her videos and downloaded those cheat sheets and everything is absolutely free. So I definitely suggest that website. So that is my overview about Organic Chemistry 1. Um, I have some more study tips at the end, but let's go ahead and talk about Organic Chemistry 2. So Organic Chemistry 2 is actually a really great class, in my opinion, at least. I would say that Organic Chemistry 1 is just learning so much of the principles. There's just so much new information. And you have to learn kind of all of the boring stuff, like chair conformers and stereochemistry. I hate stereochemistry. Like, I still hate stereochemistry. Um, just, just like a lot of like principles and concepts for you to learn. And then organic chemistry too is like, okay, you know all that, like, okay, we got that out the way. Now it's just like reactions and mechanisms. And like, I love that. Um, in organic chemistry too, my professor always used to do a molecule of the day. And it was just like rant, like just anything you could think of, whether it was like a dye that we use in, you know, our clothing, or if it was like a medicine, um, it was just so cool to like kind of you know, um, related to everyday stuff. So for Organic Chemistry 2, I did follow a lot of the same tips I just talked about with Organic Chemistry 1. Um, a couple more tips that I started to use in Organic Chemistry 2 was I would do whiteboard review. And so I would kind of just like 
stare at my blank whiteboard and just try to write as many reactions as I remembered or I would write out the reactions and then um, I would just go and try to fill out the products as much as possible and vice versa. Um, and so I really like whiteboard review for organic chemistry too. Just something about it really like helped me out a lot. Something I also did in organic chemistry too is keeping a long list of the reactions. Again, this course was really just going to be reactions and mechanisms. And so just having a list that I could like check off and for every reaction, I was like, okay, I definitely practiced this. I got it, check it off, do the next one. And that just helped me to know that I wasn't missing anything when it came around to test time. Since um, Organic Chemistry 2 was a lot of reactions, it's oftentimes was just like, once you knew like what the basis of the reactions was, like let's say a nucleophile attack on a carbonyl. But sometimes your professor might switch things up by maybe a reaction that will actually not react or putting multiple functional groups on them. Then you have to remember, okay, which one reacts, which one doesn't. And so I would say my first step in studying was always just learning like the basics, just understanding um, what was going on with each one. And then the best way I find to study for organic two is just as much practice as possible. Even making up your own molecules, like just throw a bunch of functional groups on there and then try to remember, okay, what's gonna react, what's not, what's the most stable carbon, you know, what's gonna go here. And then you can kind of look back to all the individual pieces in order to figure out what the right answer is. Um, so making up your own questions. And then I also went to GSS, which I had a really great GSS leader. And he would like look through the past exams and pick out like some really key problems. And we would work through those. I usually went between eight to 10 practice exams before I took the class exam. Um, so that's definitely a lot of time because every exam is like 50 minutes and so um, that was already like eight to ten hours of studying just taking the exams and then of course I would review them and then what I would also do is for every practice exam that I did I would pull out the really challenging ones and I'd make a whole other exam of just the challenging ones um, and then I would print that and then do that one again um, and just keep that cycle going just going over those problems and um, that's really key for organic chemistry too, even more than organic chemistry one, because at orgo one you just have like a lot of different like things going on. But for organic chemistry two, it's really reactions and mechanisms, um, which I found made it a little bit easier because you just really had to focus in on those skills rather than I said in organic one all these other skills. Another thing I would do for the mechanism list is make sure I knew those mechanisms inside and out, literally backwards and front. I remember there were some some mechanisms that you did them backwards as well so <laughs> literally knowing them like like off the top of my head and so when i'm studying for an organic chemistry 2 exam i might okay i'm working on you know these specific topics and then i'm like look at the time like oh another hour has passed hit the whiteboard i'm gonna do this mechanism run through the mechanism check that it's right back to studying another hour passes I'm back on the board practice another mechanism like just throw that mechanism practice in there like you can have an alarm go off on your phone it's mechanism time <laughs> so when I'm doing mechanisms on an exam I'm actually not just like muscle memory but it's more so remembering what happens next and why so I'm like okay this is gonna attack this now we have like a positive carbon so that's going to attract like a nucleophile a nucleophile will go in what's going to happen next oh we have this comes in like i basically narrate it in my head i create a story um and that helps me out so so much um because on the exam if you see something that doesn't really look right you can kind of go back to your narration and think like okay well why did this happen why might this not happen so before i forget here is the grading outlook of how i did in organic chemistry 2. So now we're going to hop back into general chemistry. Um, so after taking the two orgos, then next I took general chemistry two. What's really interesting is that this course is the first chemistry course that I actually used a textbook for. Um, general chemistry one, not really. Orgo, not at all. Um, but in general chemistry one, I found within like the first couple of classes that my professor taught like basically straight from the book. He was also the first time, that was also his first time teaching the course. And so he was going really like along with the book. And um, so I found the book super helpful. I read every single chapter that we covered. And then of course, after notes, it's practice, practice, practice. And so I would just do chapter um, problems. My professor, it was the first time he was teaching this course. And so he did not have practice. But yeah, I didn't really have any practice exams to do. And so I really turned to the book. I turned to online. Um, I did all of my discussion worksheets and I just kind of checked off all of that. 
And then our first exam was actually insane. Um, <laughs> I like laugh looking back at it now, but that was the first exam in my life where I truly felt I was gonna fail. A lot of times I'm really dramatic and I'm like, oh, you know, the exam didn't go as well as I wanted to. Like, I know I messed up on this, this and that. But like during that exam, I was legit like, I'm gonna fail. <laughs> like, because I had like, this is no lie and no drama, like at all. My pages were blank. Like it was, he called like half time and my pages were blank. I kept going from question to question, trying to like solve it. And I just, I was freaking out. Like my heart was pounding. I was like, this is insane. Like this is, it was crazy. And basically what happened is that since this was his first time teaching this course, he like did something, which I think he changed it after this first exam, which is that he gave us all the equations on a separate sheet, which sounds completely fine, but he also gave you key stuff that you needed to solve the problem on that separate sheet. And so when I was reading the questions, I was like, this is impossible to solve. Like there was so much not given, there were too many unknowns. And I, I was legit like, that's why I kept my pages are blank. Cause I was like, I cannot solve this until finally I calmed down and I looked at the sheet like more carefully. And then I would see like, oh, there's your enthalpy value that you need to apply to this equation to solve for this, to solve for that. And like, thankfully I ended up doing really well on that exam within like the last bit, like adrenaline kicked in. I don't know what to take away from that other than during an exam, try to calm down. Um, oh, actually a tip about general chemistry, um, it's actually a really good study tip is that a lot of times what you need to solve the question is given to you in the question. It's a lot of times like math and oftentimes you're just solving for an unknown um, using an equation. And so once you figure out what's given to you, what do you need to find? Um, and then how can you find it? What equation should you use? It's usually pretty straightforward from there. And here were my grade breakdowns. And so um, this class was actually only a two credit course. And so our exams were 50 points each. Like as we kind of go up the classes, the curves tend to get a little bit smaller. That can change from class to class, but at least in my experience, that's what happened. Um, so yeah, I had an A minus uncurved that curved to an A versus again, <laughs> in orgo one i had a b minus that curved up to an a so it all just like depends on um how the class is doing so the last chemistry course that i've taken is biochemistry one biochem 461 for if you go to university of maryland and i love biochemistry oh my gosh i'm so excited already to talk about this biochemistry is now going to a 400 level like course um so i was really nervous about it because one i did not have a ta i did not have discussion i did not have gss like all these things that i felt carried me through my chemistry career were gone <laughs> biochemistry turned out to be like in comparison easier i'm not saying it's easy but like in comparison it actually turned out to be an easier class than my other chemistry courses i don't know like i was i was very genuinely surprised the pace of the class was not crazy fast. I felt like our first midterm took forever to come about. I felt like we really took our time reviewing concepts from general chemistry, talking about thermodynamics. We really like easily went into learning our amino acids, learning our proteins, like everything felt very user friendly, I guess I should say. Like it didn't feel like like a slap in the face of like all this stuff coming at me in like chemistry courses, honestly often do oh very very manageable again that's just my experience but that's how it compared to me compared to other chemistry courses what i love about biochemistry is i mean i'm a bio nerd as you can tell i love biology and so biochemistry i felt like finally i was like okay this is why we learn chemistry as bio majors it's to get to this point and to really understand how these molecules are working in the body so my number one study tip for biochemistry is learn your amino acids um i tried to start learning them within like the first one and a half week of the semester and i would do this through flashcards i would do it through whiteboard reviews i would just like on a blank whiteboard, I was like, okay, what are the 20 amino acids? And I would go through all of them and try to remember as many as possible. Um, so I would do that a lot just to like constantly make sure that I was still keeping them memorized. I, even when I was studying for the exam, I was like, oh, 
let me like spell my name with amino acids. So I'm like K and then I'm like, <laughs> I like actually spell my name and I was like, oh, it's my peptide. I know it's just such a nerd moment. Um, but yeah, just stuff like that. You can literally spell anything um, with amino acids. And that was actually an extra credit on my exam was to write a word with amino acids. Like, so that's a great way to practice. Like just constantly like check in and like practice and study them. As far as studying, I'm very similar to general chemistry too. I use the textbook. Um, I don't know. I, I just found the textbooks really helpful, honestly. And I'm the type of student that I'm always wanting like to make sure that I'm I'm using as many resources as possible and then I'm really taking in all the information. And so along with class and class notes, I would read the textbook from front to start. I would do the practice problems. And I found those really helped because a lot of times in biochemistry, the questions are a lot like explain this rationale or like why or why not. Um, and so it kind of made you really think and again, apply the concepts that we're talking about in class. And so the textbook questions I found were really similar to the types of questions that my professor was asking. So my typical study for biochemistry, um, I was going to class, always asking and answering questions within class. I did not go to office hours, make my own practice tests as always by pulling out questions from different things. And I would sit down, give myself 50 minutes, try to take it. Um, reviewing concepts, reviewing the amino acids, reviewing the PKAs. Um, really amazing resource for biochemistry, which is AK Lectures. Like this guy is amazing. And for biochemistry, it was like absolutely amazing. He covered basically everything that I learned in class. And so these videos really helped me out as well. For the great breakdown for this course, on exam one, I got an 82 out of 100. Exam two was a 95 out of 100. Exam three, I had a 50 out of 50. That one was a take home exam. So like we had like a week to complete it. I know I had a 127 out of 150. And so my final score was an 89% and that was normalized to an A. Really interesting reflecting on all of these chemistry courses and just thinking about all of the work everything that was learned, the friends that I made, the professors that I had, just everything that came along with chemistry and taking it at the University of Maryland. And I'm excited to take biochemistry too. Um, I'm excited for the challenge and I'm just excited to learn more. The final tip that I just wanna say is just believing in yourself and believing that you can do it. Yes, it's hard. And when you're studying, it's gonna feel like such a struggle. It is a struggle, um, but don't think that you're gonna be caught in this struggle. Having that growth mindset to know that you can do better, you can do better, like that you can achieve, that you can put your best foot forward, I think is so important. Mindset is honestly so important. And um, I just know that these classes can like really get you down. And again, I want to acknowledge that and how difficult they are, but just know that you're not in this alone. Um, you know, my DMs are definitely always open to just share tips and just know that the hard work that you're putting in really can make it out in the long run. So I just want to thank you all so much for watching. Definitely check out the blog that is corresponding to this video below to kind of read through all the tips again and for links to any of the websites that I mentioned and links to my resources as well. I just really hope that these tips helped and just kind of hearing my experience and how I studied for them to maybe get some ideas about how to study for it as well. If there's anything that I didn't mention that you think is a helpful tip, definitely comment it below and just give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more videos. Again, wishing everyone best of luck this semester and thank you so much for watching.